You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And how are you doing on this wacka, 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 wacka doodle Friday? (laughs) Just thought I'd mess with you just a wee, wee bit. Wee bit. It is a Freaker Friday out here in Grammy land. And I'm assuming just about everywhere else, unless you're across the international dateline, and then it's some other day. But don't ask me which day, because I don't know where you're at. And when it comes to international dateline so hey sorry don't know what to tell you Ooh, hey you know what my microphone works a hell of a lot better when i put it up higher isn't that just cool okay uh let's see Uh, it's freaker friday and it's the last friday of june and last night was a strawberry moon and i didn't have no whipped cream or nothing to go with the strawberries damn it Hello, kitty cat. Are you going to help me tonight? Rascal has decided to join me for the rocket chair this evening. So if you hear, ah, ah, it's kitty cat and claws. <laughs> She's very good at that. Okay, let me see. Who all do I need to check out first? Fakey Book. I don't see anybody over here on Fakey Book um, paying attention at least. Uh, oh, darn it. And a friend of mine's brother passed away in the morning. Darn it all. He was a fun guy, too. Damn it all. Oh, R.I.P., dude. R.I.P. Uh, not a whole heck of a lot going on over on Fakey Book. It has been rather slow of late. Over here on Twitter, my stalkers has stayed pretty much the same. Thank you ever so much, uh, Barman and Grimner and, um... Let's see, Vinny, I think, even shared it. Thank you guys for sharing that out there. I really do appreciate it. You guys are just awesome. Awesome sauce. Um, Let's see. Wee-haw. There we go. Do that. I had to retweet because Barman tweeted it. Okay, and I have three notifications. What are they? Is it somebody that... Yeah, it's Barman. Thank you, Barman and and RLM Radio. By the way, if you are listening, (laughs) if you're not, you can't hear me tell this, but if you are listening, you're listening on reallibertymedia.com channel 3 or the RLM Spreaker channel or RLM TuneIn Radio Station or RLM Internet Radio Station or God knows where else, and we're later going to be on the RLM YouTube channel and the RLM BitChute channel. So, um, yes, who's giving me stuff? Oh. (laughs) Oh, Grammy, you pervy. Woody's back. Hi, Woody. And and we got a nastier and a flash nastier. (laughs) Damn it. Okay, I got to finish saying hey to everybody else. Um, Let's see. Okay, I did Facebook. I did Twitter. Oh, there's a baby with a half a mustache. Sweet. Okay, over here on this effing site. Thank you, Grimmy, for posting it over here. I really do appreciate you over here. And I appreciate this effing site. And y'all, by the 23rd of January, come on. Donate. Donate. We'd appreciate it. I know I sound like a broken record, broken record, broken record, broken record, broken record. Boink. Oh, hey. <laughs> That was kind of fun. Sound effects in my headphones. Cool. Okay. Um, but yeah. If you could come on over here to freedomsnetwork.com and uh, join in and chip in a little bit. Keep it up. Help pay the server fees. We'd really, really appreciate it. Um, I see Grimmies over here as well as the lovely Estrella. Paca Bell Forest Garden. Ooh. I'll bet that would be a very pretty one. We played Paca Bell's Cannon for my eldest daughter's wedding. Okay, I also see Rob Renner, or Bob Renner, is over here, as well as Katie Troxell and Java, 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 Java Doctor. Yes. Woody! (laughs) Oh, 
Vijnastir is Danish. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who don't live in the middle of nowhere? I live in the middle of nowhere. That's for damn sure. Out in the boonies. Okay. Um, so, hi everybody over on Freedoms Network. Minds. Hey there, anybody that's listening in on Minds. Thank you, RLM, for sharing that over there. I'm running a little bit because I'm. we're supposed to have rain moving in. And so I was doing a lot of outside work that I wouldn't be able to do if it was raining. So, <clears throat> so I didn't get a chance to do a whole heck of a lot of much of, yeah. I didn't pull up a whole heck of a lot for tonight's show either. So it's going to be a sit back and punt kind of thing. Yes, I'm going to be punting from the chair. Chair punting. <laughs> oh, well. Could be fun. Could be interesting. Now, if you are in the RLM, and if you are not, if you're listening over on Spreaker and you're wanting to send me little messages or something, sorry, sweetheart, I got tin can kite string and duct tape for internet. Because I am out in the boonies. And so come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Join the chat. Think of a nickname. Give me some shit. Give everybody else in the chat some shit. They'll take it and they'll dish it right back to you. Because, you know, we don't have the proper permits to keep shit. So, you know, if you do, if you give it to us, we got to give it right back. It's just, you know, it's kind of like an Indian giver kind of thing. And EPA crap. I said January. Did I really? I am so messed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Moosey, thank you for pointing that out. Good God. I am really... Durr, durr, durr. Okay, hello, rascal. I know, sweetheart, Mommy's going to have to trim your claws. That's just all there is to it, because you're poking the girls, and that's not fun. Okay, thanks, Moose. <laughs> Okay, over here in the RLM, which is where you really need to be, because, yeah, like Moosey just pointed out, I have an, an issue sometimes. I get my turds wormed around, or sometimes I even say the wrong month, you know, because I'm just kind of messed up like that sometimes. The brain just kind of goes, Hurr. okay, um, ouch, okay, so, uh, oh, yeah, see, Moosey don't want to keep shit either. <laughs> okay, so right up top we have Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. And yes, it is June the 29th, not January. Yeah, I know, Moosey. Am I just messed up? <laughs> and there's a bit of a delay um, going on because, yeah, like I said, tin can, kite string, and duct tape and wind. So, you know, because it's wireless, and so the wind is going, never mind. In any case, yeah, it's June the 29th. June, the sixth month, not the first one. <laughs> oh, God, this is going to be a good one, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to be one for the record books. Do you have any idea how many times she screwed up that night? Holy Lord, here, we got it on tape. <laughs> tape? Does anybody do anything on tape anymore? It's on video, although there's no video, but it's live stream. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to move along because my mind went somewhere else and I just don't need to go there. Hi, Grimmy. Grimmy is just so awesome. He is the RLM god, and he's basically... I consider him the internet god, as in G-A-W-D, god. So, yes, July is next month. It, actually, next month is both of my granddaughter's birthdays, and my mom's birthday, and my brother Joey's birthday, and, my ne and one nephew, and my ex-mother-in-law, and do I have any other birthdays in July? I can't think of any offhand. Hmm. Yeah, Rob Works, I should start a wireless company. <laughs> oh, really? Thank you, Moose. <laughs> okay, In July the 23rd is when the server fees, need they run out, so they need to be paid again. So if you could, <laughs> over on that Freedoms Network site. Thank you ever so much, Moosey. <laughs> Okay, okie doke. 
In any case, yeah, Rob, as soon as I, I win Powerball, of course, that means I have to buy a ticket, doesn't it? That's right, Chloe, Grim God. Grim God. He's a Grim God. I need to get back to saying hi, don't I? Mind candy. Who's a mind candy? Powerful and the power and potential of human mind. Is that a long one, Rome's? <laughs> I do have VHS tapes. I really do. And the farmer has one of those players that plays either VHS or C or the DVDs. So, um, um, F and dog. <laughs> oh, you was the F and dog this week? Okay. You fixed it. Grimmy fixed it because he's the fixer man. Okay. Come on. Oh, no. I don't want That's on eBay. I don't want to do no eBay shit. I don't go to eBay eBay's one of those places where it's like, bad juju, don't start. Don't go there. And that way you don't have to worry about your bank account being empty. At least not from that direction. Okay, back to saying hey. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, 14 minutes after. Um. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. <clears throat> That's true, Moose, but only those in the RLM chat need to know that. I'm not going to read that out loud. <coughs> Excuse me. Holy smokes, Batman. Okay, Moose Girl's here. The mighty Moose Girl. And you know what? Moosey and Grimner are going to be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball. I'm hoping it will be Grimmy and Moosey for the Freakers Ball. Because if it ain't Grimmy and Moosey, then... It's going to be just Grimner and balls to the wall. And hopefully it's going to be someone else's balls on the wall. Because that would be rather painful if Grimner did that. I don't know how he hosts a show with that. Moving along. Hi, Kate. How are things down in Florida? I hope everything's wonderful for you down there. I also see Asmo is here. As well as the lovely Beth Z and Chel Sedoni. Got a double dip of Chloe going on. Just an echo. Chloe. I'm here. Kinda. Okay, I am physically here. Mentally, I think my brain went on vacation and there's a squirrel running the show right now. So just be prepared. IB Mobile has joined. Hi, IB Mobile. <laughs> okay, uh, IB Don C is also here. Hi, IB Don C. How's the puppies doing? Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house, as well as Jay Dredd. Hansel! Hi, Hansel. How's things over there on on the East Coast in Boston? I can't even do that. You know, I used to be able to do a pretty respectable Boston accent, but I just don't, I, I'm not out in the general public anymore, and so I don't have anybody to practice it with. And you guys, well, you know, you'll put up with anything. <laughs> Hell, you're still listening, so the proof right there. JJ's. I also know JJ's is still playing over on uh, webcom.co.uk, playing some tunage. And looky there, Juana Taco. Dipple? What's a dipple? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. I asked that. It was a rhetorical question. Really, honest it was. Hi, Juana Taco. How are you doing, sweetheart? I don't feel like tacos tonight. I don't know what I'm going to do for supper tonight. I have to figure something out. Hmm. Maybe a PB and J. Sheikon. Sheikon. Okay. Uh, let me see. Rain is here. Hi there, Rain. You know, I hear you're supposed to be coming for a visit this evening. Thunder Boomers as well. So, uh, anybody reject this? Speak now? Okay. No. Nope. Go for it, Woody. Okay, RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, is also here. You find an ISO? I, 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 okay. I'm reading the chat, by the way. Um, let's see, Rob Works, did you fire up the bubbler, hun, and I just didn't see it? Am I a slowdy poke? I'm obvious. I told you. I told you. I have, um, yeah, a squirrel is running the show tonight. I don't, I'm scrolling up and I'm not seeing a bubbler. I'm just seeing that damn Kissinger and shit like that. Ew. Disgusting. Disgusting. Okay. Who's calling? Call. Call now. Don't call, um, 
Let's see, what's that called? Uh, operators are waiting for you to call. Ooh, Wonder Woman, bud. I wonder what I'm doing. Okay, let's see. Rob works. I, that's the one I said just now. Rome's is here. Rome's. Romeo, Romeo, where fault thou, Romeo? <laughs> no, no, that just doesn't work. Okay, uh, hi, Rome's. How you doing? Cycles. I see Cycles is here. Thank you, Rob. I see you passing around the bubbler. Sweet. Um, Colfax 101. Then we got the Danish Flash and the and the former formerly known as an American Flash. <laughs> that hippie bugger. Both of them are in here. See, it's a twofer. But that, that's supposed to be on Tuesdays. Two for Tuesday. Frumpy is here. I also see I.B. Don. See, Woik is here. See, there's another twofer going on. Jay Dredd has quit. Crazy Ivan, Crazy Ivan. Ah, okay. I.B. Mobile has joined us. Hi, I.B. Mobile. I also see Kozu is in the house. Hey, Kozu. Oh, Laters, Woody. Have a good one. Okay. Um. Oh, all the mosquito man could want. Just no mosquitoes. Them damn little buggers are biting like crazy lately. This hungry. Hungry them and flies. Good God. Okay. I said Kozu. Moy, 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 moy. Hi, moy. God dang, it's 20 minutes after and I'm still doing this. Damn, I'm slow to poke today. Um, let's see. Pox. We got lots of poxes going on. We got a pox box and a poxified and a poxophone and a poxy home. So four poxes to go, please. As well as a pom 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 sauce. Sock puppet. Hi, sock. How you doing, hun? Also see Skittles. Skittles likes to drop F-bombs. That's what Skittles does. Oh, well. And... To round out the crew, the one, the only, the phantom of the RLM. <laughs> uh, I'm not Irish. What? What? Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, and you know what? I I did that IRC. I opened it. I didn't. I didn't do it yet because I'm still using hex chat. But I may try that one later. Hmm, when I have time to play on the computer instead of just popping in, diddling, and then leaving again. Because if I, if I do something like that, then I want to be able to stick around and make sure that I didn't f fee-buttle things. Because I'm good at that. I push buttons. It's what I do. Okay, let me go see what's going on over on Twitter. Cute little baby. Cute little baby. Ah, yes. And Marcella. Yeah, at one Marcella. Yes, I love that one. This is Arnold Abbott. In 1991, Arnold created a Love Thy Neighbor Fund in honor of his late wife, which continues the work they did together of feeding the homeless. Now, in spite of this noble cause, Arnold has been arrested on more than one occasion for violating laws in USA, which prohibit feeding the homeless in public. But Arnold, who is now over 90, refuses to stop. Good job. Good job. I don't have the slightest fear of being arrested and will continue as long as there are, is breath in my body because these are my people. His foundation has fed over 1,400 homeless people a week since 1991. Bless your heart, Arnold. Bless your heart. Now that is a truly spiritual and giving in individual. And I think I will just type that. There you go. And I'll share it. <sighs> okay. Thank you, Arnold. Yeah, I shared another one. She's she was on a on a roll for a while there. Fourth of July sale on computers. Hurry, get one now. It's got Windows 10 on it and everything. It's totally trash, but hey. 
uh, the earth is 4.5 billion years old and you get to be alive during the Trump presidency. Wow. Wow. I must have drawn the short straw. <laughs> oh, isn't it a curse? May you live in interesting times. I think it is. Okay. Mm uh, do, do, do. Oh. Yoko? Yoko Ono. Let's see. Now let me see. Okay. After reading all of that. You know, there's been so much stuff on the interwebs and so many things. And I've gone to a lot of links that are like... You know, they're, they're shared by people that I really like, and I wonder, okay, either your account has been hacked, or, or you don't realize that you're sharing some nasty juju shit. So, there's, it's a, it's a reader beware, it's a clicker beware kind of world, and a, and don't be live everything that you see. Ooh, nuns calls on 17 deep state operatives to testify. Yeah... See, and that's, to me, that brings me to, and I think I've actually done this one before. I may not have, um, but it's, it's from Damien James, and I love Damien James. Bless his heart, he's got such a wonderful, I'm going ahead and closing Twitter too, by the way. Um, let me just do this. Oops. Ah, stutter fingers. There we go. We'll go to that one. Is that the one I want? It must be. It must be. Hmm. Let me try this again. Official. The collapse of Discord. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Nope. Okay. So, from the official DamienJames.wordpress.com, fake news. <coughs> Excuse me. The deliberate lie that is unraveling the world and that's more pervasive than you think. So be wary where you click. Authors note, the term fake news has become a famous or infamous buzzword in the past two years, as it's been used by everyone from Donald Trump Silskin to the corporate lame-ass propaganda mainstream media system, and uh, those sources still have their panties in a twist about the results of the 2016 selection. So, what do they mean when they call a source of a story fake news. Is it consistently applied? How does one not fall victim to fake news? Well, this article is going to cover what fake news is, and unlike the half-baked bullshit articles put out by mainstream media organizations on how to spot fake news, which are laughably absurd, I'm going to cut through their crap and deliver a better set of guidelines in helping readers identify what's facts and feces as far as news is concerned. So, what is fake news? Okay, I'm going to have to stop doing that because <laughs> I'm getting a little lightheaded. <laughs> Must be my beverage. Okay, so... <clears throat> well, it's going to depend on who you ask. You know, on one of the mainstream site media sites that try to help people identify fake news, they list mostly nonsensical giveaways like domain name and the about section, which is just completely phony. None of the major news media organizations give a detailed rundown of their entire staff and where they donate politically. They only list the past reporting credentials of their editors that sound professional, but fail to disclose the most relevant aspects of their news views, the degree of their partisan alignment. 
hell, even worse, is that they only list the editors of their online stories and fail to explain that network executives are the ones who drive the direction of editorial staff, who then drive the direction and phrasing of news stories delivered by reporters. Note he did not say journalists, he said reporters because they are reporting. That's all they're doing. Now, WikiLeaks revealed that direct collusion between respected news sources, quote-unquote, and political candidates was a major issue in the 2016 presidential campaign, with CNN especially and Shitlery Clinton. Probably the most honest of online sources on fake news call articles that are hyper-partisan in tone and designed to make you angry. Fake news. Which means that nearly every news organization out there that's trying to take a dump on Trumpel Stilskin's morning coffee with the constant hyperbolic denunciations of what he's doing in office, that it's significantly different from the actions of previous POTUSes, is fake news. And that is fake, because it is not significantly different from any of the other tards that have occupied that office. So, by that definition, MSNBC, CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, and let's not forget Fox, are all fake news. So... If that is indeed the case, then Trumple Stilskin has been correct in calling them out for any number of stories that they've run in the past two years. Now, full disclosure, I don't much care for the guy. I think he's an arrogant, petulant, boisterous, self-worshipping self boob who somehow bumbled, stumbled, and fell into the POTUS. And his only redeeming quality is he seems to correctly call things as they are far more frequently than can be attributed to random chance. And you know what? That was all in parentheses, that full disclosure part there. And I, I, I got to tell you, I agree wholeheartedly with, with Damien on this one. I think he's an arrogant, petulant, boisterous, self-worshipping self boob who somehow bumbled, stumbled, and fell into the popo seat. Period. So, while I do agree with the general premise of the USA Today cri um, criteria on fake news, I feel that it doesn't quite tell the whole story on fake news, which is, ironically, probably the best definition a fake news that it doesn't tell the full story or the truth about an event and that it attempts to selectively generate public outrage for some public figures that engage in certain behaviors while sweeping the same situations under the rug for others yeah not who you know, it's who you blow. So, how does one spot fake news in a world that has mainstream news organizations attempting to whip you into a frenzy and manipulate you at every turn of the page and click of the channel? Well, I've come up with some guidelines. And as far as that's concerned, well... Okay, Damien, let's see what you got here. Let's see what you got. Guideline number one. Believe nothing, nothing that you read, and maybe only half of what you see. That works for me. This one is pretty straightforward. People lie. They lie to themselves. They lie to their loved ones. They lie to strangers. They lie whenever it suits them. It's what people do. People also just love drama. They can say that they don't, but they're probably lying. See above. And most people are gossiping high schoolers of any age, and they want to hear the juiciest rumors about people or positions that they don't like. Doesn't matter if it's true or not. And if it's not true, all the more reason to just make something up. 
Now, news organizations know that you want to hear certain stories that reinforce your skewed view of the world and why they only report certain stories or angles on NBC, MSNBC, CBS, etc. and why they only report certain stories or angles on faux news. Well, media organizations are more in the business of manipulating people than actually reporting on the events of the day. It makes them buttloads of money. And they know that you'll segregate yourself out of or segregate yourself out to the correct network to indoctrinate yourself based on your preconceived notions on the world. In that and in other ways, media organizations suck. But it's what they do. Know that your media source of choice is not telling you the full story or the full truth when they report on a topic because they gain more twitching of your puppet strings and manipulating you than letting you know what's really going on in the world. And you might be good, though probably not. You're probably still screwed. You probably are. Now, guideline number two, if a story seems shocking or unbelievable, <laughs> it probably is. I need a drink. Now, Adolf Hitler once said, the masses will be more easy or the masses will more easily believe a great lie than a little one. I think we all know how that turned one that one turned out. His story, there is a hyphenization in there, his hyphen story repeats itself because the masses never get smarter or better informed. Don't be the masses because sometimes the M is silent. So if you hear a story that seems ridiculous or redunculous or shocking or unbelievable, don't be lazy. Don't be a lazy twit and just accept it. Don't just run with it and share it like crazy. Do some research on the matter and look at multiple sources. See, I need this part too because every once in a while I'd go there. Remember, above where I mentioned that media machines are in the business of feeding you bullshit because they know you want to swallow it. Yeah, same thing applies here. Stop biting on the juicy stories and swallowing the crap that they're feeding you until you've exhausted all sources you can find. Now, guideline number three. When you're trying to research how truthful a story is, look for repetitious phrasing in the sources to identify those who copy other story and establish which media organizations are working together. Because, yeah, there's an awful lot of them that, you know, you'll read it and then you get to the bottom source. Okay, so you go, click on that source and it'll take you and it'll be pretty much word for word. And at the bottom of it, it'll have source. It's funny, and if you follow the bouncing source, you'd be surprised what you will find at the end of that shit trail. Um, what? Mother pluckers? What are you guys talking about? Um, okay. Back to this. So, people in media are just as lazy as people who aren't in media. And if they can get away with simply copying someone else's news report and simply rewriting a few sections, they'll do it and put their byline on it. What's most important to note in these situations are the words that are copied and pasted from one report to the next. 
because media narratives and propaganda only work by repeating the same stance or story over and over. And that's one thing that Andrew Breitbart in his book said. If you wish to get some, get something inside someone's psyche, repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And you know what? Look at this shit. Look at all this stuff. Look at all the TV shows that are on. You know, even the ones that are that are the um, kind of person of interest. That's the one I've been watching lately on on Netflix, which is really quite fascinating. But I'm get I'm to the first season was really pretty fascinating and interesting. And then the second season, I'm starting to get to the point where it's like, okay, guys, come on, something, mm, yeah. And so, in any case. Repeat and repeat. We're sitting on a bench. Pete fell off. Who's left? Repeat. Repeat, repeat, repeat. That's how you get it in the psyche. So, and guess what? <laughs> That's what it says right here. Media psychologists have shown that if you can repeat a story or a lie often enough to people, they will eventually believe and accept it, regardless of how true the story is. They also know that if the lie or story deviates too much with each new telling, people have a harder time keeping track of it and start questioning the story. So keep it simple, stupid. The whole kiss theory. Not the group. Keep it simple, stupid. So this is why I say that you should look for the same phrasing showing up in different sources or news reports. And these are typically political agendas that media organizations are trying to force you to accept as being true. They aren't that concerned with the generalities of the news story that they feed you so much as they are, you know, with you internalizing and accepting their talking points as true. You know, the generalities, nah, that's just a bunch of bloody, 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 yada, yada, yada. But if you internalize it and accept it. Guideline number four. Skip the Snopes and PolitiFacts websites. Yeah. Because with the rise of fake news has come the rise of fact-checking websites. And to be fair, they used to be about checking the veracity of the claims of public figures. But, as with all endeavors that initially have good intentions, they gained the trust of the masses and then turned into wordless piles of garbage run by political hacks who aren't interested in the truth. Basically, they are building a multi-lane, super cybernetic highway to hell. Uh-huh. With those good intentions that they started with and lost along the way. I think probably with that first little cloverleaf loop-de-loop -loop shit that they do. In any case, the majority of fact checker sites I've perused lately don't list any facts or cite any sources for their fact checking. Instead, they look to spin the particulars of the claims being made in such a way as to discredit them without really proving or providing any hard evidence to the contrary, which pretty much ensures that they aren't going to ascertain the truth of a claim. In other words, slur and smear instead of rebut with facts, basically. If you want proof, he has a link to an article and this Snopes fact-checked version of the same article. And notice the linguistic and interpretive gymnastics that are at work to debunk the claim. Snopes and other fact-checking sites don't bother citing any sources for their debunkery. It's almost like they're entirely fabricated. Almost, and yet, yeah, they are. So, these fact-checking sites have become more about helping to push a political narrative for their party than cutting through the collective crap and telling it like it is. And the feelings of their friends and political bros be damned. Because the truth, <clears throat> excuse me, the truth doesn't have an agenda. 
and it's just as cutting to one group as it is to the other. Because the truth takes no sides. And the truth cares not if your feelings are hurt. Kind of like the universe is really indifferent to your day-to-day -day activities. Because the universe will continue going whether you're doing those day-to-day -day activities or not. And if it quits going, obviously your day-to-day -day activities did not stop it from annihilating itself. So, he goes on to say, And yes, I know that this makes it harder to verify what's true in news by ditching these phony fact-checker sites. And it sucks more than a shop vac on high that there aren't sites out there that are truly dedicated to helping people make sense of what's really going on in the world, that are truly nonpartisan. But that kind of crap gets expensive. And I don't have the time, money, or a trustworthy research staff available to set something up like that. So, I'm sorry, Damien, but you would be so good at it. Because you would cut through the bullshit. And call it bullshit, all at the same time. Guideline number five. Don't start off mentally rigid on what you think you know about a topic or story before all the information is in. So, what's actually true is largely a matter of likelihoods or probabilities. Initial reports have a low probability of getting the story completely right because not all the information has been gathered. Getting set in a mental rut of this breaking news story is 100% true and nothing anyone can say could possibly change how this story may play out is more than likely going to make you look like a stupid ass when all the information comes in. So, this guideline might be the hardest to explain and the hardest to adopt, so I think an example would be the easiest. Remember the Trayvon Martin case? How it initially blew up in the media. The story started off with a poor little innocent black youth, Trayvon Martin, getting viciously gunned down in cold blood in an unprovoked attack by some white guy named George Zimmerman. Now most of the dumbass public, as opposed to the regular public, lost it when the initial story came out because, well, damn, a name like George Zimmerman sounds like a white guy name and everyone knows that all white people are inherently racist and other races can't possibly be racist. So it was definitely another case of systemic racism and white on black crime. Now... Add in how the media creatively edited Zimmerman's 911 call to make Zimmerman look super racist with tolerance and understanding in his crypt as his kryptonite. Mm -hmm. And how the media refused to show the photos of Zimmerman taken immediately after the attack in order to really push the whole innocent black teen angle. And you get a perfect storm of ignore ants because the social justice wormiers and the black supremacists those groups started organizing and chomping at the bit for justice or is that just us which do they really mean and to show solidarity with poor oppressed Trayvon these groups bit on the initial story and refused to wait for all the information. As idiots do. But then some previously missing information has ma was made available to the public. First, the neighborhood where the whole altercation went down had several armed break-ins and burglaries in the weeks leading up to the shooting. Then it became known that the altercation took place close to 3 a.m. while Zimmerman was performing a neighborhood watch sweep. Then it became known that Trayvon was behaving erratically and attacked Zimmerman first and that Zimmerman shot Martin last. 
Then the audio and transcript of the full 911 call came out. Then it was revealed that Zimmerman was Hispanic and not white. And once a broader picture of the event had been painted, it suddenly wasn't a racially motivated hate crime for an older Hispanic homeowner to address a young black male who was wandering around and acting strange in a neighborhood that had been recently beset by crime at three in the morning, who then proceeded to physically attack said Hispanic man before getting shot. Now the same shit happened with Michael Brown and Ferguson. Dumbasses went all in on the report, initial reports of a white authority figure killing an innocent, non-threatening young black male, immediately leapt into outrage and started rioting and looting, <clears throat> I mean peacefully protesting, and then once more information came in about the attacks that corroborated the officer's stories. These groups turned into spineless little chicken shits who started worming their way out of accepting that they were wrong in the first place with all manner of excuses. Oh, it's just a conspiracy by the cops or the white people or the mayor or systemic racism or, 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 or it's just a conspiracy. So is it really a conspiracy if everyone knows about it? Hmm. And by the, um, by the media that has an angle to run, that knows that they can manipulate you because you always respond with the same dumbass, knee-jerk, reactionary nonsense to these kind of stories, maybe you could try getting all the facts before taking any action that would make yourselves look stupid on national television. Hey, but you'd get your 15 seconds of fame. Ding, 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 ding. Or you could just keep doubling down with increasing convoluted conspiracy theories as to why you're always on the wrong side of the story. Well, I don't care. It's not my reputation. Jeez, people. Or cause. For being that are that's being destroyed so yeah you know whatever keep making your stories you start sounding like a freaking broken record broken record broken record broken record guideline number six the more complex and convoluted a news story has to become in order to arrive at the final position the less likely it is to be true and an additional point of consideration, if the story uses the terms potentially, allegedly, probably, may have, or other terms that waffle on the strength of the event being true, especially if they're used multiple times in the same article, it ain't news. It's known as conspiracy theorizing, propaganda, fake news, or horse crapiola. So, the best way to explain this guideline is once again with an example. And the most compelling example is what happened in late 2016, when Shitlery lost the selection through her own incompetence. Not two days after the selection, Shitlery claimed the media helping to corroborate that she lost because of James Comey. When that didn't stick, she, they, it, shit, made the claim that the Russians sabotaged her and aided Trump. The Russians did it. I forgot to turn down a volume. Damn it. I hate when that happens. That was a rather loud gadunk. Okay. Um, oh, and because WikiLeaks got their hands on countless emails from her campaign and the Democratic National Committee that showed just how corrupt she and the DNC were leading up to the elections. Yeah, it must have been them damn Russians. Now, prior to the selection, and as the emails started being released, Shitlery and the DNC initially went into damage control. 
as the emails painted a very disgusting picture of what the DNC and Chitlery were doing behind the scenes in her campaign. So how did the mainstream media report on the matter? That the emails may have been altered from the original text to give the wrong impression about her slash them. Notice the waffling language. Here, once again, we go waffling, waffling, waffling. I like waffles, but not this kind. Now, <clears throat> it's not an outright denial that the emails were original and unaltered. But it helps to give the impression that the emails may not have been legitimate. May, might, almost, kind of, sort of, possibly. Those lovely morphing words. Very vague. Very whispery. But... That went largely unmentioned in the MSN. What? Making the previous story on the emails maybe being altered was fake news. But it didn't stop the big media companies from reporting it as a possibility. <clears throat> Strange. And I thought they cared about the integrity of the news. It's spewage, sweetheart. It's spewage. So after that, the story switched to how the Russians, dun, 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 who influenced the selection away from Shitlery by releasing said emails, except WikiLeaks, Russia, and a number of security experts stated that Russia was not the source. That story was fake news because it wrongly attributed blame for Shitlery's loss towards something that was completely meaningless. And claiming something is the cause for an event when it most assuredly isn't is lying and or inaccurate. Reporting lies or explanations for an event that are clearly incorrect is fake news. Didn't matter where the emails came from. What mattered was what was in them. The story became needless or needlessly overcomplicated to explain why Shitlery lost. Russia didn't hack the voting booths to throw votes, votes to Trump, as numerous voting security experts clearly confirmed that it didn't occur. People simply voted against Shitlery because of the things that she had said and done in person and in print. Voters looked at her track record of scoring huge sums of money by selling influence in the U.S. federal government. They looked at the gross missteps she made in Benghazi and in the email server fiasco. They looked at the fact that she had no solid plan or answers on how to address issues like the spread of the Islamic State the fundamentalist Islam-inspired terrorist attacks around the world, illegal immigration, law enforcement, human and drug trafficking within the U.S., the trade deficit, how to bring jobs back to America, or the tax code. And that was why, the why of why she lost. And that was why Trump will still skin one. And that should have been the story. Okay, Damien, it was a selection. But no, we have to keep hearing about how since Trumples, as a businessman prior to running for the presidency, did business with an international clientele list, which may have included Russian businessmen, he probably colluded with Russia to win the selection. And the MSM made the story far more complicated than it needed to be to explain how an event occurred. Fake news. There is literally no logic or reason to that statement, and no evidence was actually presented to justify such allegations. Just shadowy sources within the government that made the claim 
translation, and overly complicated explanation for why an event occurred that is only corroborated by shadowy, shadowy government sources that can't or won't provide solid evidence to substantiate the claim is reported by MSM, a.k.a. fake news. Spewage. Now, guideline number seven. If a political or public figure is involved in potentially morally ambiguous dealings, i.e. your corrupt scumbags, look for disproportionate levels of outrage or emotional manipulation efforts to find the perpetrators of fake news. Yeah. In other words, people are prone to failure of all sorts. It's what they do. Corruption is bound to show up in politics at some point. So what's important to understand is that it happens across all political parties and affiliations. There are also a series of political understandings within DC, the cesspool of the country, that allow those who have been caught in such acts the ability to withdraw from consideration for political appointments and fade into retirement or obscurity. Yes, you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. Yes, you abused the public's trust. Yes, you took money from the wrong people. Now, go on your way. We won't put you in jail, but you're a liability to us. So we don't want to see you again. Now, to be clear, I'm not a fan of this kind of behavior. In the Pledge of Allegiance that I said growing up, it said, with liberty and justice for all. Somehow that is not this country anymore. And, uh, sorry, Damien, I don't do the Pledge of Allegiance anymore either. <clears throat> I don't pledge allegiance to a piece of cloth or to a country. I pledge allegiance to people, friends, family period. Fake news always rides in on its white horse to rescue these people from obscurity by alleging that they're proof of some heinous conspiracy between this administration and whichever new um, arch enemy of the United States, which exists in the current political climate. In other words, it's the wheel of misfortune and somebody just got to be the the bullseye target. Fake news will always come from the same media organizations that are willing to denounce such behavior now, but had no qualms about the same behavior when their team was running the show. Some outrage is probably warranted in these stories, but excessive amounts for comparatively smaller offenses is a clear indicator that partisan hacks are pushing an agenda. Case in point, Michael Flynn and Bill and, Hin and Shitlery Clinton. Now, Michael Flynn is currently a hot topic in the news as he accepted money as payment for a speech he gave back in December 10th of 2015 to Russia Today, a Russian government-owned English-language media outlet on which he made semi-regular appearances as an analyst after he retired from U.S. government service. Sounds bad, right? No, actually, no. All the media chatter says that he violated the um, emolu emoluments? emoluments clause of the Constitution, which according to 37 U.S. Code 908 states, Congress consents to the following persons accepting civil employment and compensation for that employment for which the consent of Congress is required by the last paragraph of Section 9 of Article 1 of the Constitution related to the acceptance of emoluments, offices, and titles from foreign government. Number one, retired members of the uniformed services. Number two, members of a reserve component of the armed forces. Number three, members of the commissioned reserve corps or of public health services. B, approval required. A person described in subsection A may accept employment or compensation described in that subsection only if the secretary concerned and the secretary of state 
<coughs> excuse me, approve the employment. But what about those who are civil servants and not ex-military? Well, equal treatment under the law means that the same measures that are aimed at retired servicemen and women should apply to those who have served in the civil service side of our government. In other words, what about those who have served as, oh, I don't know, President of the United States or Secretary of State or Senator? Let's stick with President as technically he is the popo in chief of U.S. military structure, yada yada, blah blah blah. So it will make the whole argument easier at least. So why is Bill Clinton, a demon crap president, allowed to collect $500,000 for a speech he delivered in Russia on behalf of a Russian state-owned corporation that was seeking to obtain controlling interest in a company for their mining rights of uranium a strategic military asset in America and abroad, while his wife is Secretary of State and is also on record as giving hundreds of other speeches for millions of dollars, including some on issues that contradicted official U.S. policy in some regions, again, while his wife is Secretary of State, and he can be seen as a good guy who did nothing wrong. Yet a retired member of the Uniformed Forces and lifelong Democrat who happens to work for a Republican president who gives a speech on the state of the world on behalf of the same country gets paid significantly less for it and he is suddenly national security threat and violator of the Emoluments Act. But Clinton is not. So how does that work out? Well, number one, after reading that Emoluments Act or whatever the hell it is, it's a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo gobbledygook. That's number one. Number two, <clears throat> a lot of those things only apply to government employees. You know, a lot of those rules, regulations, all that kind of bullshit, if you really dig down into it, that only applies to government employees. Period. So... Okay, so, now I'll tell you how this works out. Because this is fake news. If you treat those who break the same law differently because of who they are or which team they play for, you're a fake news pusher. If your outrage is at who did the law breaking or who they work for and not at the law breaking itself or the consequences of their questionable behavior, you're a fake news aficionado and partisan hack who is part of the problem. The point is, I'm getting tired of the hypocritical, phony outrage and fake news stories coming from mainstream media fake news sources who are actively trying to manipulate and control the public. And I'm tired of hearing them bitch about how other fake news sites are corrupting the outcome of events. When people don't just do what they want to them to do. It all seems just a little too fake for me. I like my news like I like my women. Real, honest, direct, and insightful. And there better be some funnies that come with it. Well, hey Damien. <laughs> oh well. And he closes with... Media is run by people. People lie. And that's not likely to change anytime soon. So if you want to stay accurately informed and avoid the strings that media and politicians are trying to tie to you or to turn you into their puppet, you'll have to learn how to identify the tricks that they employ to get you to put their strings around your neck. Hopefully, the above set of guidelines will help you identify and avoid fake news sites going forward. Best of luck. So, I will just go ahead and share this with you. No, I did not, Vinny. I did not. Not yet. And just for that, I'm not going to. I did say Vinny several times.
Okay. And Gooberzilla keeps wanting to build spaceships. What the hey? Um, and right underneath that one is one that uh, Damien wrote. It was also written last year, in May of last year. The end of Western civilization and globalism begins with Trumple Stilskin. I'm sure there are several of you that will enjoy that one as well. But I enjoy the way Damien writes. Um... I didn't see anything new, so I don't know if he's not done anything in a year or so, or what's going on here, Mr. Damien. Where you is, darling. I like the way you write. You cannot just disappear. Bobby! I see you, Bobby, over here in this effing site. That effing site is just effing awesome. Yes, I see the flasher thingy going. Um, you know what? That's true, Goober. A 12-gauge does take care of many problems. Many problems. But it also creates many problems. Because, number one, you got a mess to clean up. A real mess to clean up. Okay. I'm going to share this one over on Mines as well. Okay. And then I'm going to go to a story that I got from Mines. It's on MiddleEastMonitor.com. And it's dated yesterday, Ireland to discuss bill banning Isra Israel settlement produce. There you go. Ireland's parliament will, dis will discuss a bill promoting a ban on Israeli settlement goods next month. After postponement in January, that's, um, and in a tweeted, or in a tweet posted yesterday, Irish Senator Francis Black announced on July 11th, my bill to ban illegal settlement goods is in the uh, Senad. I know I probably said that wrong. Black added that we're close to a historic move for justice in Palestine, but I need your help. Please take two minutes to ask your TDs and senators to support the bill. And there is a link. Uh, Palestinian cultural groups urge Eurovision to boycott Israel. The senator also posted a video urging Irish citizens to tell their lawmakers to back the initiative to boycott produce made in Israel's illegal settlements in the occupied Palestinian territory. Now, it's noted that the discussion at the Irish Senate regarding the bill was postponed in January after Ireland's ambassador to Israel, Alison Kelly, was summoned for the talk at the Foreign Ministry to clarify the legislat legislative initiative at the demand of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Kelly told Nutty Yahoo that the Irish government actually opposed the bill and subsequently informed Radhika Radian Gordon, who is the Israeli Foreign Ministry's Deputy Director General for Western Europe, that the bill was not a boycott, sanctions, and divestment movement, um, movement linked initiative. It was not, really? At the time, slamming the bill, Nutty Yahoo said its sole purpose was to support the BDS movement that hurt the state of Israel. And the Prime Minister's office stated that the bill backed those who wish to boycott Israel and completely opposes the guiding principles of free trade and justice. There's no such thing as free trade when you got tariffs going on. Trade is supposed to be free. Not terrified. Get it? So, as recalled by the Haaretz group, a group of Israeli activists, among whom were former 
uh, Nesset members, lawyers, former ambassadors, artists, and academics penned a letter asking Irish lawmakers to support the bill in January. So, you got you got some internal rumblings going on in Israel, and I think this would be pretty freaking awesome if this is true, and if they do it. That would be pretty cool. Um, oh, top to bottom scroll buttons. Cool beans. Okay. Uh, he built it out of hay. That's no good. He's not going to get very far because, man, once them booster rockets kick in, he's just going to go, he's going to be a well-cooked little piggy is what he's going to be. Vinny. And I think this is awesome. I think the Irish government should do that. I think lots of governments ought to tell Israel, guess what? You guys want to be total doucheries? We just won't allow any of your produce to be imported into our government or into our country. I mean, if you got to play in these rules as they are set right now, let's make it difficult th for the assholes. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Where to go now? I really don't have a whole heck of a lot else going on. Did anybody go out and see the strawberry full moon yesterday and make wishes? I have an article here about it that I think we'll just go to. It's a little bit late now. I was going to, yeah, well, couldn't go to it yesterday because, well, oh, I guess I could have. It was from the 26th. Um, yes, I know. This is from ConsciousReminder.com. Stop it. Got it. Go away. Okay, so, Capricorn Strawberry Full Moon. Make your wishes come true. Apparently, the power and illumination of the moon enlightens and enriches our lives. And it showers us with good wishes and blessings. And on June 28th, there's going to be a full moon in Capricorn, known as the Strawberry Moon, a name well known among Algonquin tribes, as it is during this limited time period in June that strawberries are harvested every year. Now, this full moon was called Rose Moon in Europe, as strawberries are not popular there. Well, I prefer strawberry. And the time of the full moon offers us a chance to get rid of things and people who have no worth in our life. So all the negativity, all the negativity that has been polluting your life can be washed out with the full moon's energy. And as the full moon will bring about the transition in seasons, it will also help us understand where we need to concentrate our energies. The places that we'll be experiencing summer should take this time to de-stress, rejuvenate, and fully appreciate the glory of nature and its healing qualities. I would do that if the wind would quit blowing and the thunderstorms would quit washing away my garden. I would de-stress. Although it's not completely washed away, but it's, it's pretty sad. And as most of us spend a lot of time indoor, we should really enjoy ourselves this summer. Places which have um, winter should be relaxing, resting, and saving energy. Okay, so basically, everybody should be on max relax mode. That works for me. Let's all max relax. So, um, it goes on to tell you how to get what you wish for, which, hmm, um, it's a little late now, it says yesterday, <laughs> but I'm still going to go ahead and share it. Just so y'all can see it. You saw it, Vinny? I saw it after it rose for a while. You know, it it was probably about 9, 9.30 when I went outside and, and saw the moon. But I did not see it rise. Bummer. 
I watched it rise the day before, but it wasn't quite full yet. So, okay. Let me put this over here as well. And see, Frumpy, maybe you could go check out the moon when it's a strawberry full moon and see if there's strawberries on the moon. Get that spaceship, or not Frumpy, Gooberzilla. Yeah, get that spaceship built and go check it out. That would be way cool. And then you could send me back messages because I really don't want to ride long. Sorry. I used to think I wanted to, but nah. Nah. Okay. Let me see. What else do I have? Huh. Hmm. 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 How about, let's see, I got enough time. Let me see. I don't think I did this one. Did I do the natural, I may have. Maybe not. Um, it's a blog over on Minds from Luminous Sovereign. The natural liberty of man is to be free from any superior power on earth and not to be under the will or legislative authority of man, but to have only the law of nature for his rule. John Locke. I don't think I've done this one. I did a couple others that Luminous Sovereign did, but I don't think I did this one. I'll start in, and if, if you remember it, then tell me, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and share it again. <laughs> Natural law or law of nature does not mean law of the jungle or of our environmental condition. Natural law is not the imitation of the functionality of plants or animals in nature. Each species has its own nature to follow, not to imitate the nature and ev evolutionary development of other species. Neither is natural law the natural law from early 15th century or natural order as apparent order in nature from the 1690s. Natural law is based in principles of truth about the reality we live in. Principles are first and foremost at the root, the most necessary and important and a foundation to build upon. Now the word principle expresses natural moral law in the very way that we use the word itself, such as in principle or on principle. Natural law is an essential property of existence. It is born into being and is forever there in our reality without human causality. Our goal is to put these principles first things first in our lives, to recognize and align them or align with them because they are based in truth, not belief. Man's society is not putting original, generative, beginning, foundational principles first, but trivialities, lies, and deception. Therefore, natural law is not man's law. Now, anarchy, etymologically broken down into its component parts, it has a completely different meaning than what people today imagine the concept to actually be. If you ask somebody on the street what they would define anarchy as, what do you think their answer would be? Chaos? Well, let's look at the word itself. Anarchy comes from two Greek words. An, meaning without, and arkos, meaning chief or ruler. Therefore, when combined, it makes the word anarchos, which translated to English language is anarchy. It's the same word with the same meaning. We learn that the word does not mean chaos, but is literally defined as no rulers, no masters. Now, does that sound like chaos to you? Well, I don't think so. Actually, if the world, or if the word, no, if the world were to have no masters, no rulers, 
that would appear to be more so a lot like order rather than chaos. Now the question then comes to mind is why would we believe anarchy to be the exact opposite to what to that which it actually is? Well the term obfuscation comes to mind and the tar term obfuscation is derived from the Latin words ob meaning over and fuscare meaning to make dark. When combined the definition of obfuscation literally means to darken the meaning from above. So who could possibly be darkening, confusing, and obscuring keywords, concepts, and information from above? Well, the next term that should come to mind is hierarchy. And hierarchy is a fairly intricate word, which has a lot of concepts to understand. Hierarchy comes from the Greek hierarchos, meaning a sacred ruler. It's derived from the same root as anarchy. So let's do a little word play and come to a deeper understanding of what is actually going on here. Higher arc equals supreme ruler. Royal arc masonry is supreme ruler construction. Building brick by brick, mind by mind, a supreme ruler who governs mankind. The flip side of this concept represents true masonry, which would then be interpreted building supreme mastery of one's will in accord with the governing forces of nature. Now the status quo, or the higher arcs slash rulers, stunt imagination and forward progress of consciousness every time they obfuscate words such as anarchy, to mean the opposite of what it is. George Orwell in his novel 1984 referred to this as doublespeak, and the intention of doublespeak in the story is, um, let's see, to the selfish desires and ambitious endeavors of the elites of today. They use their unlimited financing to obscure from your eyes life-saving information that you can use to make informed decisions so that their agenda of domination slash control will go through as planned. So what we're currently experiencing now is chaos. The elites call it order democracy, socialism, and a plethora of other names. And as a result of this chaos, we are experiencing manipulated suffering in our world and cannot solve the problems because we do not have the knowledge of natural law as our guiding light in any of our endeavors. We need to know this knowledge, understand it and utilize it in the world if we desire to be free to express ourselves without restriction. This knowledge is a prerequisite to liberty, meaning we must come to know how natural law is governing the behaviors of every human on earth and understand why we must do that which is in accord with what is right. Now, true anarchy, then, would be the hidden concept to strive toward in order to manifest an orderly or wholesome society. The question now is, how do we do this? The solutions cannot be derived from the same system of manipulation that reinforced its own creation and growth. People must come to know and understand the foundation which all truth in the world rests. The trivia method, <clears throat> excuse me, trivia method of truth discovery and hermetic principles of divine cosmic order, and the result of incorporating a pure information stream into one's life is conducive to living a self-responsible, self-governing existence in accord with nature and her laws. 
internal monarchy, which means self-rulership, mastery of oneself, will manifest itself automatically. Once natural law is understood and consciously acted upon. So what we call the matrix, which is we are all born into on this planet, it is the problem. The matrix has the human kingdom set up like a colony of bees. This hierarchical structure is not natural for human beings because we are not animals. Animals are operating on instinct alone. They're completely programmed by nature to behave the way that they, they do. Humans are not. Human, humans are operating on a much higher plane of consciousness. Mankind is not bound completely by nature because mankind has free will. And as a result of free will, consciousness is molded according to the actions of the collective majority of the people on the planet. Therefore, authority is not a true principle for humanity, but is in fact an illusory concept based in fear. But it is for animals, because man wants to control the behavior of other beings, the environment around him, and the possible outcomes of the future. The consequences is a con, con excuse me, contraction rather than an expansion of consciousness. It's a reduction rather than an abundance of liberty. The control grid is set up so that ultra wealthy preserve their future generations power and control while the poor struggle to survive and get milked more efficiently. This behavior is in complete opposition to all that is naturally lawful in the universe and it is therefore a deception. Now science teaches that humans are programmed by nature and free will does not matter because the genetic programming is God. Christians teach that it's all part of God's plan so just stand down and let what happens happen. Both beliefs are wrong and do not align with the truth. The Creator, whatever that is, did not design us with the conscious ability to decide for ourselves just to sit on our hands and let the ultra-wealthy manipulate and bend the masses to their will. In fact, the personification of Jesus took action on the bankers in the temple of his day, noticing their evil and whipping their asses. We are to follow the example that Christ laid down for us. It's clear and simple like all truth is. Humanity is in sufferance and it is human, human itty that are the targets of mind control. I wonder if maybe he didn't mean to do that space in there. Human itty. And yeah, we are the targets of mind control. Our aim needs to be pointed at the root causes of that suffering at the top of the hierarchy. The root causes are authority and those who would thwart forward progress and freedom. Now the only authority that is true for humans is self-authority. We are in control of no other human being but ourselves. If we try to control another human, we are committing a serious violation against natural law. We are to love each other and promote freedom. We own our own bodies and we own whatever property we are using. If someone demands that we cannot smoke weed, that person is a tyrant by his conscious actions. If someone coerces me to purchase a permit for $30 so I can smoke the weed, then that person is a slave master. If I were to comply, I have consented to their supremacy. If I do not comply, I could be threatened with violence and fines. That is not the progression of free will, freedom, or the pursuit of happiness. Now Cicero describes natural law as true law, and true law is right reason in agreement with nature, 
or God or the Supreme Being. And it is of universal application, unchanging and everlasting. It summons to duty by its commands and averts and averts from wrongdoing by its prohibitions. It is a sin to try to alter this law, nor is it allowable to repeal any part of it. Yes. Thanks, Vinny. Further explaining this concept, Cicero added that natural law comes from God to man through man's ability to reason. Man is the only one among so many different kinds and varieties of living beings who has a share in reason and thought given by God. And reason, when it is full grown and perfected, is rightly called wisdom. The first common possession of man and God is reason. Thus, natural law is law that can be reasoned by man, because it is law written on man's heart by the Creator. The Creator just uh, doesn't just grab us and in a lightning bolt right with his finger on our chest. Natural law is embedded in the conscience. Natural law provided our founders with such concepts as unalienable rights, unalienable duties, self-preservation, or the right to self-defense, justice by reparation, and duty to take care of oneself, just to name a few. Now Blackstone justified further the American founders' use of natural law within the Constitution and its framework when he wrote, Man depends absolutely upon his Maker for everything. It is necessary that he should in all points conform to his Maker's will. This will of his Maker is called the law of nature, and this law of nature dictated by God himself is of course superior in obligation to any other. Another way of saying our rights come from God. The liberty of man consists solely in this, that he obeys the laws of nature because he has himself recognized that them as such, and not because they have been imposed upon him externally by any foreign will whatsoever. That's from Mikhail Bakuni. Bakunin. So right equals correct equals true equals moral equals natural law equals no harm done equals good good wrong. I have no idea about that good wrong. Um, okay, which equals good. And then wrong equals incorrect, false, immoral, not natural law, harm done, evil. Okay, needed a comma there, sweetheart. So, throughout human history, as our species has faced the frightening, terrorizing fact that we do not know who we are, or where we are going in this ocean of chaos, it has been the authorities, the political, the religious, the educational authorities, who attempted to comfort, uh, comfort us by giving us order, rules, regulations, informing, forming in our minds their view of reality. To think for yourself, you must question authority and learn how to put yourself in a state of vulnerable, open-mindedness, chaotic, confused vulnerability to inform yourself. So think for yourself. Question authority. That was Timothy Leary. Now this is an issue on multi-dimensional levels, from the material to the spiritual. All is interconnected. Something that wants to be hidden is put in plain view. It's right in your face if you know where to look. To understand the control systems is to understand the Luciferian connection. To defeat this control system, the occult needs to be recognized by everybody. And so like a horse with blinkers, if you can't understand what's in front of you, then you are not going to understand what is happening to you. We cannot ignore the occult, 
because we think it's negative. It's not. It is information about how the universe, the human psyche, and natural law work. The word occult simply means hidden from sight, something obscured. But when people hear this word, negative connotations and misconceptions come with it. Occult is derived from the Latin noun oculus, which means eye, and from the Latin verb occultare, which means hidden from sight. This knowledge of ourselves and how we function has been taken out of the general circulation of humanity and has been reserved for an elect few who have guarded it for selfish, selfish usage. This has created a power differential in society and how we use that knowledge makes it either good or bad. The usages can be for order and goodness, love and freedom, or for the wielding of power to gain differential advantage to create chaos and evil. The latter has been used. We need to look at the negative to understand the strategies that have been used to understand what's happening to us so we can be in a position to do something about it. The manipulators who understand the positive aspects of this knowledge willfully choose to use it as a weapon against those not in the know by continuing to occult it. When the manipulation tactics are known it becomes common sense knowledge and only then will humanity ever be free. We need to de-occult this knowledge. The occult is no longer the occult. It is brought out into the light of day. Now that was from Luminous Sovereign, Natural Law and the Concept of Authority. It's a blog over on Minds.com. And I really like checking out what Luminous writes. So. Who's doing LSD? What, you didn't bring enough for the rest of the class? What the hell? Dang it. Okay, let me put this over here on the effing site. Real quick. And then I think I'm going to go check out the pig. Because, um, well, I need to know what happened this day in history. Pretty much. That's what it is. And we'll do that one. And that one. There we go. So, PIGazette.com. What are those two boys up to, Hambo and Porcus? Come on, gents. What the hell are you up to? You still got your dad's story up? Oh, I guess that was just, okay, never mind. Hmm, so, word of the day, habitual liar, a noun. It's a chronic purveyor of self-serving falsehoods, unless he's a lib, in which case he's promoted to news anchor. Wow, is that not, like, synchronistic? <laughs> okay. Okay, in their quotable quotes section, you realize that if the never Trumpers had had their way, Shitlery would be making these decisions today. We wouldn't have Neil Gor uh, Gorsuch, whoever that is, on the Supreme Court. We wouldn't be discussing the possible constitution constitutionalists that Trump will stillskin will nominate the damage will be irreparable that's from Mark Levine thanks Mark Levine I you know I think it's just two sides of the same turd you know you can't pick it up from a clean end that's just all there is to it whether it's Schittler or Trumples two ends of the same turd both ends will get shit all over your fingers just saying okay in the Tasty Tidbits section, 
Jim Baker and Jimmy Swaggart have written an impressive new book. It's called Ministers Do More Than Lay People. <laughs> oh, that's naughty. I love it. I love it. Okay, uh, a transvestite is a guy who likes to eat, drink, and be merry. No, wait a minute. Hey, hey. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, the difference between the Pope and your boss is the Pope only expects you to kiss his ring. But um bum bum How about this one? My mind works like lightning. One brilliant flash, and it's gone. Oh, man, I resemble that one. Or how about this one? The only time the world beats a path to your door is if it's or is if you're in the bathroom. And oh, good Lord, yes, I only have one bathroom. And when I have grandchildren here, yeah, could be entertaining. Let me tell you. How about this one? I hate sex in the movies. Tried it once. Seat folded up. Drink spilled. And that ice. Well, <laughs> it really chilled the mood. <laughs> Supposed to go to drive-ins, hun do that kind of shit they stood they do still have those at least here in kansas um it used to be only death and taxes now of course there's shipping and handling too yeah and the government's going to charge you for all that shit unless you just quit playing along or uh how about this one a husband is someone who after taking the trash out gives the impression that he just cleaned the whole house kind of like that video i shared earlier um, you know about women giving their husbands a honey-do list? And, and how, what would happen if guys were to give women a list like that and say, get that done today? Yeah, I don't do honey-do lists. I, no. Uh, my next house will have no kitchen, just vending machines and a large trash can. No, no, I like my kitchen. I like to cook. Uh, the definition of a teenager, God's punishment for enjoying sex. Oh, good God, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, it starts when they're three. <laughs> and as you slide down the banister of life, you should pray that all the splinters are pointed the other way. Or that the previous slider got them for you. That would be the way to do that. Um, Let's see. Okay, so this date in history, June the 29th, 1891. Holy put up or shut up, Batman. Tree huggers run out of job hunting excuses when Uncle Sam perpetuates a green cabal, the National Forest Service. Uh-oh. This date in history, the 29th of June, 1966. For a while, Uncle Sam acts like he's in a real war, orders U.S. warplanes to spend some quality time in North Vietnam, bombing Hanoi and Hang, Hang Phong for the first time. Well, isn't that just special? No. This date in history, the 29th of June. 1979, a Mexifornia sports legend, the sports mascot who started a craze. Oh, hey, the San Diego chicken makes a comeback at Jack Murphy Stadium. I like the San Diego chicken. <laughs> One of the few things I liked about sports. And finally, this date in history, the 29th of June, 1992, a year to the day after a 6.0 quake hits the same area, Southern Mexifornia is feeling all shook up when two quakes, one a 7.4, hammer the region. Well, obviously, you didn't pay attention to that first little tap on the shoulder. And so, old Kaboom thought, well, you know, we're going to have to rattle their cage a little bit more. Okay, so that's all they had for this date in history over here on PIGazette.com. Come on over, say hey to pa Hambo and Porcus. Tell them Grammy sent you. And they will squeal. Oh, and I just got to share this. I wonder if her ass is jealous about the amount of crap coming out of her mouth. This is the pick of the day over here on the Pig Gazette. It's just too funny.
Oh, Poxified's been playing with his Xbox. Yay! Have fun. Okay. I probably ought to put this over on F and Sight too, just because. And I may put it over on Mines as well. Because, you know, they need to be introduced to the pig. I mean, I don't agree with everything that Hambo and Porkus say, but by golly, they're just funnier in hell. Most of the time. Every once in a while, I, I gotta kind of go, Whoa, dude, seriously? But, eh, for the most part, I enjoy reading what they put out there. So, let's see. We'll do the pig. Aw, man! You guys! Hey, you guys! It's not showing as a picture over here on mine. Damn it! Okay. Let's see, where else shall I go? I still have a few minutes left. Vinny, how did your show go today? I totally, um... <laughs> oh, Grimmy. <laughs> I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. That's just, mmm, mmm. Um, ooh, abduct me. I'm packed and ready to go. Hey, that's a hell of a sign to put it. I don't want to put that on my roof, though. I don't know. There's some creepers out there. You know, them. Some, there's some of them people or some of them. I don't know if they're people. Um, critters out there in outer space. If there really are critters out there in outer space. Um, what is this? I have something showing in my... LDS smile. Hmm. Hmm. I have no idea what the hell that is. Guess I'll check that out later. It was saved on the bottom of my homepage. It's like, what the hell is that? Okay. Um. Let's see what's on Zen News, shall we? Oh, hey. Doggy pose. Justin Timberlake receives greatest gift a man can get. Wow. I'm going to have to clean up my home page. Because, <laughs> yeah, Zen News is looking like it's a bunch of crap that I really don't care about. So, that one's going to have to go bye-bye. Um, hmm. What's on the Daily Haze? Let's see what they got to offer. Um, what? Oh, you bowed out today, Vinny? Oh, darn it. Well, I understand that, sweetheart. Okay, let's do this one. It looks extremely stupid. People. People, people, people. This is from the dailyhaze.com. Burrito Bob calls police on man eating burrito on Bay Area train. Apparently, Burrito Bob is trending after a man was filmed calling the police on a Bay Area rapid transit train for a man eating a burrito. The man is the fourth person to go viral for a police-related incident in the Bay Area. Days ago, Allison Edel became known as Permit Patty after threatening to call police on an eight-year-old girl selling water. In June, Henry Sinte became known as Jogger Joe for throwing a homeless man's stuff in Lake Merritt. What a ass! And in May, Jennifer Schulte became known as Barbecue Becky after calling the police on a group of black people barbecuing at Lake Merritt. Huh. Man, you know, there's some people out there that really need to understand that if it ain't adversely affecting you, leave them the hell alone. If they ain't hurting anybody, walk away. 
Apparently a man in Northern California is receiving internet fame after going viral for calling the cops on a man eating bur a burrito on the Bay Area Transit in Oakland. The man is being referred to as Burrito Bob and he is the newest whatever whatever. In the video the man is heard saying, you can't wait. The sign says no eating or drinking. You don't get it? You must be stupid. He then gets up and walks to the BART car's intercom, and the man goes on to say, I'll get the police on board. How's about that? As he requested an officer. Well, you over-officious asshat. Sign, sign, everywhere sign. Don't mean doodly shit to me. Dude. Um... Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so this weekend. Uh, Vinny, are you and Flash doing the dork table in the morning? Or at n noon Eastern time? You guys still up for that? So I can let everybody know. I'd truly appreciate it if you'd clue me in, Vinny. I'd rally I would. Because I don't do dork. Because, yeah, I will be... If it does not rain tonight... I will be out mowing the big lots with the riding mower. Today I was out with the push mower and doing the around trees and all that other fun stuff. Tomorrow is the riding mower and doing the big areas. If it does not rain tonight, I'm doing that in the morning. If it rains tonight but doesn't rain a lot, then I will be going out and mowing tomorrow afternoon and I'll be pulling weeds in the morning. So, you know, yay. Oh, the life of a Grammy out here in the boonies. Don't you just love it? Ass hat and mon monkey ass. Oh, good lord. Okay. <clears throat> In any case, uh, possibly tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, Vinny and Flasheroony are going to do the dork table. And if I come in for a break, I may um, come in and give a listen, at least for a while. And then Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimmy is going to be on with the blues. And that's going to be, and probably a rousing game of trivia going on in the chat as well. We got uh, harvest going on out here, so I don't think my farmer's going to be around on Sunday. So I may be able to participate on Sunday, especially if I get all my chores done tomorrow. That would be cool. Um, you're good to go? Awesome, Vinny. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Directly following Grimmy and his blues tunes and the insane in the membrane trivia going on in the chat, Hal Anthony will be coming up to uh, open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed on Sunday. So, later on this evening, though, there will be Grimner and Moose Girl with the Freakers Ball where a good time will be had by all. And, um,. Yeah, should be, should be a good time, and I may actually be awake for some of that, although I do believe, I don't know, I'm going to find something to eat, try and get my blog done, and then go have a soak. So I may have to listen from the tub. <laughs> okay, let me go back to my, I got to find something else, because this, I still got a couple of minutes left. So let's go see what else is on my homepage that might be something fun. I really do need to invest in a lottery ticket. It seems like there's all kind of people that are winning all kind of... What the hell? Ticket caught in paper jam brings Kansas couple lottery luck. Son of a sea biscuit. They won $22,000. or $22, Well, shit. Shit. I'm in Kansas. Why can't I win that? Damn it all. Oh, see you, Vinny. Have an awesome evening, hon. Okay, so, <laughs> well, cl close it with a giggle. From UPI.com, Bear steals box of donuts from a North Carolina garage. Apparently, a North Carolina woman whose kids left some donuts in the garage captured video of the snacks being stolen by a not-so-sneaky thief, a black bear. 
The video shows the bear feasting on the box of donuts that had been left inside the garage of the Hendersonville home with the door left open. When your kids get donuts and decide not to put them up, the woman says as she narr narrated the bear snack, my teenagers left a box of Ingalls donuts in the garage. And this is what happens. Apparently, four minutes after they arrived home, the bear walked into the garage. He found the donuts in the grocery bag, got them out of the bag, and carried them, carried the box to the door and proceeded to eat them. Three bear claws, one curler, and once he finished, he wandered back into the woods by our house. Well, how funny is that? See? If you want some, if you want something, you gotta take care of your shit, dude. That's all there is to it. If you want it, bring it in. There might be someone else that'll get it. I am not going to be Skyping from the tub. <laughs> that would not be good. Would not be good. Y'all are crazy. Oh well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Freaker Friday, the last Friday of June. June, and soon it's going to be July, and then I have birthdays coming out the yin-yang. Oh, well. In any case, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your Freaker Friday evening. Please stick around, because Grammy and Moose Girl will be on later with the Freakers Ball. All kind of fun stuff going on over the weekend. I'll be popping in and out, depending on how much chores I get done. I'm hoping to have a day of rest on Sunday. But if not, I'll still be popping in and out and saying hey. So, until then, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>